Some people are asking, what has changed since our last Mr. Cool DIY one year review? Well, the results are in. So a lot of you found our last video on the Mr. Cool DIY system very helpful and some things have changed in the last year of us owning it that we wanted to kind of update you and you guys asked a lot of great questions as well. So in this video, we'll answer some of those questions by giving some more pros, some more cons that we found in the last year of owning it and some helpful tips along the way. So we've had these units installed now for about two and a half years and they're actually heating and cooling just as good as the first day that we put them in. So that's the first pro. To give you a little context, our house is very drafty. We have a lot of drafty windows, we have brick walls, very poor insulation, and we also have just, we have 10 foot ceilings, so there's a lot of space to heat and cool. These units do a surprisingly good job at keeping up with the temperature changes through the summer and the winter. Peter asked, what is the coldest outdoor temperatures you tend to get, and does this keep up? That's a great question. So. Where we live, the temperatures for the winter, on average, tend to stay around the, the low, upper 20s. And uh, our summers tend to get around 85 and stay around there. But we do sometimes get really cold days where it might even be below zero, and really hot days where it might go over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. For us, because this is a poorly insulated home, and we've got a lot of windows that are drafty, we do feel the difference on a really cold day where the unit struggles to keep up. Now, if you're in a home that's really well insulated, you're not gonna experience that on the level that we do. That's also something I wanted to talk about in terms of how many interior units you have with your system, because depending on the location of your air handler, as they call them, if you're far away from an air handler in another room that does not have a heat source, you're gonna feel that temperature change, especially in a, in a poorly insulated home. What we did when we purchased these units, we kind of plotted out our house and purchased as many units as we needed to be able to spread the heat around and the cold air around well enough for the entire home. Now I will say that because of the lack of insulation and draft, the drafty windows that we have, we have some issues keeping certain parts of our house warm or cold depending on the time of year. For instance, for all the cold air that's pouring into this room at this very second, our unit on the wall behind me is only gonna be able to keep up with so much that's happening. So you have to keep that in mind. If your space is not set up well for any heat source, then you might experience difficulty with a mini split or any heat source for that matter. Just don't assume that if your home is experiencing difficulty with a mini split, that another type of unit would solve that problem. It could just be that your house needs to be insulated a whole lot better than it currently is. And that's part of the issue that we have here. With that being said, these units tend to perform much better than if you were to compare it to baseboard electric heat or radiators. Pro number two. So over the last two and a half years, I am happy to report that we have not had any major service repairs or expenses. And what I mean by that is there has been nothing really that has broken, no parts I've needed to replace, uh, nothing that has leaked anywhere that I've needed to clean up. These things have worked really well without any issues whatsoever. That's great. Pro number three is money savings. Number one, Pappy asks, have you noticed a savings in your electric bill after installing the mini splits from your old system? That is a great question. And it's kind of a complicated answer because we don't actually have any historical data on the old system because when we purchased this property, there was no heating system whatsoever or cooling system. So it's difficult for us to compare what the cost was before because we don't have any of that information. However, I lived at a house two blocks from here before we got this house and that property I do have the data on. So to compare, that property was about 1200 square feet of living space and it had window AC units and it had a hot water radiating system. This property, we have about 1,350 square feet in our home and we have just the mini split. And there's one room that we have a baseboard electric heater. The only reason why we installed that was to get it to meet the code requirements for having heat in the bedroom, but we don't actually use that electric baseboard heater at all. 
So the only thing that's heating our house is the mini split units. So here are the numbers. That property, we basically spent about $150 per month if you average it out over the year. In the winter, we are spending a little less because hot water radiators are more efficient, but window AC units are very inefficient. And if you have the unfortunate fact of having baseboard electric heat, heat in your home, that is way, way more expensive than having even hot water radiator heating. So $150 a month over there. Here, we're spending about $80 a month. So if you do the math, that's about $70 a month averaged out of savings. So let's take 70 times 12, which is $8,400 per year. That's our savings. Now, if we have these units last us 10 years, that is $8,400. And that is a lot of cash. Now, one thing that is worth communicating is that your energy savings is gonna depend entirely on the sear rating of the unit. That's the measurement of how efficient the mini split system is. Our units are 21.5 sear, that's their rating. You can't necessarily expect just because you're buying a mini split system that you're gonna get the same savings that I'm getting. You have to make sure that you are purchasing a set or a unit that has a high sear rating to get the same desired effect that I am getting. Pro number four. They have a great warranty of five years for parts and seven years for the compressor. That would be great. The con is that apparently they don't like to honor their warranty. I've seen in other videos and forums that people have had issues with Mr. Cool um, contacting them and actually getting things resolved. I have not had any issues. I have enjoyed my units so far. And so I guess we will kind of see how it plays out if I start having issues that need to be dealt with. Which leads me into con number two. Take a listen to this. That is an annoying sound when you're trying to sleep. This started happening, I don't know, probably about two months ago. And there are actually, this one's the worst, but there are a couple other units inside that are starting to make just sort of sounds, the mode, I'm, I think what we've narrowed it down to is that something is happening with the motor for the blower wheel. From what I've heard and seen, I've watched a couple videos on this, it is a pretty substantial project to remove the motor and to install a new one. If Mr. Cool sends me a new one for free, I still have the cost of my time and it might be, I don't know, four hours, three hours of my time disassembling this to put in a new motor. So we'll see what happens with that and I will keep you posted for sure. So before we continue this video, I just wanted to address what I just said about Mr. Cool's warranty claims. So this is a few weeks later now and we actually went through the process of submitting a claim to Mr. Cool because we just wanted to get these noises taken care of and all fixed and everything. So I went on Google, searched up Mr. Cool warranty, I submitted a claim on their website and within an hour, it was literally 59 minutes later, I received a response back from Mr. Cool. Um, it was someone from their warranty department and they took me through the process of getting all the information, collecting everything, and they transferred me over to Ingram's Water and Air's warranty department because I originally purchased these units from Ingram's Water and Air. They have their own warranty claims department over there. So Mr. Cool got me transferred where I needed to go. Within three days, I had the new motor being shipped to me from Ingram's, and we ended up doing one motor first just to see if that fixed the problem. Indeed, it did. And so then we had two more motors shipped out to us. Between the three motors that we had warranty replacements on, shipping and handling ended up being about $35. So it wasn't bad at all. On the first motor, because we had to reference a video of someone doing this project, it took us about four hours to um, remove the old motor, install the new one. Uh, we ended up cleaning the blower wheel as well while we had it all open. So we just um, did a couple extra things. That's why it might've taken us a little longer. When we got to the third blower motor, it actually took us about two hours to get all that stuff done, including cleaning the blower wheel. So it really just was a matter of getting the hang of it. it didn't take us all that long once we got the hang of it. So I say all this 
because all of the people that I heard saying Mr. Cool does not honor their warranty were wrong. Mr. Cool did a great job of getting me connected with where I needed to go in very little time. And I have no doubt that if I had purchased these units directly from Mr. Cool, they would have been just as quick to send me the replacement parts and get me back up and running in very little time. Con number three. Timothy asks, will HVAC contractors repair the Mr. Cool? So I actually reached out to several different contractors to come and do certain things on my Mr. Cool units. Granted, what I was asking of them might have been a little bit unique of a question. So I remember from my last video, some of you commented how ugly my coiling was outside and I actually tried to reach out to contact contractors to have them cut the copper tubing and um, reconnect it so that it got rid of all the excess tubing. Every contractor, I think I reached out to three contractors, every single one of them said they do not touch DIY units at all. And I think what they mean by that is they don't do significant projects in relationship to homeowner installed equipment. Now, I am a contractor, but they view it as something that is installed not to their specifications and they don't want to put their name on it because if they get any callbacks from then on for something that they touched, they feel that's a liability for their company. And so they weren't willing to do that for me. I did get some helpful feedback from one of the contractors telling me that there's not really any significant benefit for me cleaning up that extra copper tubing. It would just be more aesthetic than anything. And so I feel comfortable moving forward without having that project taken care of. Con number four. Still giving me issues. This was just an honorable mention from last video, but it's worth mentioning again because this is ridiculous. 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 To quote every other comment that I received on my last video, quote, the con about not being able to heat and cool simultaneously is quite possibly the stupidest con ever. Which leads me to con number five. I deserved a lot of that heat because that was poorly worded in my last video and I just wanted to update that to what I intended to communicate. Instead of it being a con that you're not able to heat on one in inside unit and cool on another one at the same time, what's really the con is that if you have one unit set to heat and the other unit set to any other mode, like cool, auto, fan, whatever you want, one of those two units is going to cease functioning until they are set to the same mode. And that's kind of annoying because you might be sitting in your room and your unit on the wall is not doing anything. It just has two little dashes, just like it does right now. And you're like, well, what the heck? I am supposed to be like heating my room now and I'm cold. So you actually have to go up, you have to grab your remote and determine what mode is gonna match the other units or go around the house to every other single remote and figure out which one is set to a different mode so that you can get them all working again. Now, it's not gonna prevent all of them from working. It'll just usually be one or two units that'll stop working because they're set to some different mode. So that's just something to keep in mind. Mr. Cool, as far as I know, does not have a way to set the remote so that when you change it on one remote, you change it on all the remotes in the entire house, or at least all of the interior units. You can use your app to prevent you from having to walk all around the house changing each remote, but even the app, you have to tap on which room it is and, and uh, change the mode on there. So I'd prefer to have kind of like a universal remote that controls the entire system all at once from the push of a single button. Con number six. This is kind of a con, kind of not really a con, because all mini splits across the board and even central air units have this issue, but they have what's called a defrost, uh, which kind of happens uh, when it's really cold out and you're trying to heat your home. Frost builds up or stuff starts kind of freezing in the exterior unit. And so it takes the heat that it's producing and instead of pushing it into the house, it actually keeps it to try to defrost the outside unit. What that does is puts up a little um, thing on the screen here and it says DF and it goes into a defrosting mode for could be five minutes, could be 10 minutes, but 
on a really cold winter day, five minutes sitting in a room of no heat or 10 minutes, it's just kind of like, ugh, it's like inconvenient. I'm like, ugh, I wish that this thing would just heat because I'm cold. And that'll happen occasionally. It's not very often. You'll get over it. Um, but it's just something to be aware of that these units do. And as far as I know, every single mini split has that feature built in. And it's a safety feature because if the outside unit freezes, then we've got a whole other problem on our hands that we don't want. So I'll let it defrost. But I'm just like, meh, I wish it didn't, you know? So those are our pros and our cons. And here are some tips that we've learned over the past two years of owning these units. And some of these tips we've learned from some of you guys in the comments on our last video. So thank you so much for that. And if you have any new comments or things that you think we missed, comment them down below right now so that we can do a follow up and make sure that we don't miss anything important in the next one. So anyways, let's get into the tips. First tip is with the remote. In our last video, we talked about the fact that the calibration for the temperature of the room on the unit is actually very inaccurate and you have to go into the app and set it and calibrate it. And all that kind of still stands, but there is an easier way to do it. It doesn't go without needing some calibration, but you take your remote you go to like the whatever the mode is that you want and you click this follow me button follow me tells the unit to stop using its internal thermostat and start using the remote as the thermostat that's important because i want the unit to recognize the correct temperature for me instead of high up on the wall so i take my remote set it to follow me and then this little man pops up on the screen that means it's using the remote as the thermostat there might still be some need for calibration in the app using this setting, but this is more accurate and this has resulted in a much better experience overall. Tip number two, regular annual cleaning of the units. We had a lot of comments about how have you not done maintenance on your units yet? So here are some things that you might want to keep in mind when you own a mini split. You're going to want to annually, clean the condenser coils of the exterior unit. You can actually purchase like an aerosol can of condenser coil cleaner, spray it on there and then let it sit for a little while and hose it off. We have another video about that. Another thing you wanna do is change your filter or actually just clean your filter. These filters last a long time. Mine have really not gotten that dusty at all, but maybe every six months, pop the filter out, dust it off or vacuum it off or wipe it off, whatever makes sense to you and then put it back in and make sure it's all clean. Another thing that I've seen recommended is cleaning the outside housing of stuff because if you have dust collecting on the outside of the housing, it's going to make its way into the unit as well soon and then it might start damaging stuff. Um, so those are things to keep in mind. If you have snow piling up outside near your condenser unit, just make sure that to clear it away, make sure it doesn't build up and prevent the unit from doing its job, which is to create the cooling and the heating for your house make sure that it's able to have the space to breathe to do what it does. So in general, you just wanna keep your units clean so that they function at peak performance. Tip number three. So one of you guys recommended that we install liquid tight tubing on our control wire, which runs from the compressor or the condenser to our inside head through the mini split <clears throat> line set covers. And so just that short section from the condenser to the line set cover is what we needed to cover in liquid tight tubing because before the rubber the rubber casing for the wire was just exposed to the elements which causes it to break down much quicker so we took that advice we ran with it it does involve a little bit of uh, slightly more moderate electrical skills so it may not be a task that you would be able to do yourself but there are some resources that made us feel confident on doing it ourselves so take that for what you will i will say that on the mist Mr. Cool DIY set, I had some contractors come out and look at it to do that project and they refused to touch it. Um, so you might have to learn how to do that if you want to install these units yourself and have them last long term because that's something that you might not be able to hire out. You might have to do it yourself. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave us a comment down below. If we said anything wrong or if something that you saw as a mistake or something we left out, just roast us down below. Like seriously, you guys did that so faithfully in the last one. It was almost unbelievable. Um, but we love feedback. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please share it and like it. 
um, or tell us down below. So we will see you in the next video.